Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I look forward to the best named players in the draft episodes more than you do, Perna. Now, I already covered the best offensive named players uh, on Monday's episode, so make sure you check that out. Today, we move on to defense, where previous honors featured guys like Clifton Duck and, of course, dipping egg rolls in me sauce. <laughs> Olive Sagapolu. Any defensive lineman that can do a backflip should be a top 10 pick. Maybe my greatest failing as a host of this show. Giving a BJ is the B's McNeese state. How? How did I not say? Well, to be blunt, the only way to give a BJ is to get on your McNeese. No wonder I don't have more subscribers. Best defensive players today. That's good sports. <laughs> Please, I'd love, if, love it if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I do football videos here every week. Also, I will have Big Dick Patreon shout outs at the end of today's episode. Right now we are sponsored by Fubo TV. Seven months ago, I cut my daughter's umbilical cord. One month ago, I cut my cord my cord to the cable company. And unlike my daughter, Fubo TV actually saves me money. I chose Fubo TV because they have the best sports package and I can watch my good morning football while writing in the AM. Fubo TV comes with over a hundred of your favorite channels at about half the cost of cable and has cloud DVR so you can watch anything you record on whichever device you choose. It's incredibly easy to set up. It literally takes just a couple minutes and you can try it for free and cancel at any time with no two-year commitment like you need with cable. So sign up for a risk-free trial of Fubo TV and get your 15% off your first month by going to FuboTV.com slash That's Good Sports. That's FuboTV.com slash That's Good Sports to start your free trial and to get 15% off your first month of Fubo. All right, we've got a special honor to start this episode. College football special teams coach, Casey Horney. He was hired by FIU, Florida International University, just a few weeks ago. I just wish it was called IFU. IFU, Coach Horney. Let's begin with Quiddy Pay, defensive end, Michigan. This is a guy who figured out how to game the system because when you quitty, you usually don't get paid but this quitty is about to get paid as a projected first rounder. Unfortunately, no broadcast analyst will ever be able to use the compliment. There's just no quit in this guy. Then we've got corner, Wisconsin, Rashad Wild Goose. Some of the names just speak for themselves. Get ready for Wild Goose Chase jokes whenever he gets beat by a wide receiver. And look, I'm not hoping that Justin Herbert gets injured, but if he does, I'll patiently be waiting for a corner blitz when Rashad plays the Chargers in sacks backup quarterback Chase Daniel. Off the edge, that's Wild Goose Chase goes down! Wild Goose Chase goes down! With just one pick in college though, drafting him might be the real Wild Goose Chase. Then we've got Trill Williams, quarterback Syracuse. Who or what is a trill? According to the dictionary, it's a quavering or vibratory sound, especially a rapid alternation of sung or played notes. The Denver Broncos need to draft a corner, and I think trill could produce perfect harmony. Playing next to Denver's corner taken from last year's best named players episode in E Sang Basie. If I only could throw Doug Flutie into this symphony of defense. Ooh, Symphony of Defense, what a nickname. However, according to Urban Dictionary, trill is the combination of the words true and real, used to describe someone who is well-respected. Either way you slice it, this is a terrific name. Now, keeping in theme of the arts, there's a man who sounds like an Edgar Allan Poe poem. Diomador Lenore Cornor Organ. His official draft profile by Mel Kuyper reads, Weep now, or nevermore. See, on your drear and rigid bier low lies thy love, Lenore. 
Projected landing spot, quoth the Ravens, nevermore. Tala Noah Huafonga, safety, USC. It's fitting that he played at USC and was indeed a Trojan because a Hufanga is an old English name for a very dense cock that can only be protected by a Trojan. Maybe not the biggest one in the locker room, but certainly the one that weighs the most. Equally phallic is Mustafa Johnson, defensive tackle out of Colorado. Mustafa Johnson translates to Simba's dad's penis in The Lion King. Then we've got Benjamin St. Juiced, cornerback, Minnesota. You don't want to know what it looks like when a saint gets juiced. He starts deadlifting the crucifix and resurrecting team's playoff chances. Then we've got Paris Ford, safety, Pittsburgh Panthers. I'm assuming no one in Paris actually drives a Ford, unless Ford makes a segue with multiple baguette holders. What this name says to me is culture combined with toughness breaking off a chunk of the Eiffel Tower and using it to bash in your opponent's teeth. This draft pick says Dan Campbell in Detroit to me all the way. Welcome to the Motor City, AKA the Paris of the Midwest, Mr. Ford. And we've got Chevy Stout, fullback, Concordia University. Yes, I do realize fullbacks play offense, but Chevy Stout and Paris Ford, that's a pairing for the ages. Almost as nice of a pairing as a Chevy and a Stout. Chevrolet starts their own brewing company and releases the Chevy Stout, a perfect blend of hops and thick motor oil to give it a nice chocolatey taste that will destroy your insides and make it impossible for you to drive home safely. Chevy Stout, for when you have nowhere to drive to. Brady Breeze Safety Organ. If whoever drafts Brady Breeze doesn't at least try to play him at quarterback during the preseason, the entire coaching staff should be fired. A safety named after two of the most prolific quarterbacks in NFL history? Ideally, you would not like to have receivers breezing right past your starting safety. But based on the fact that this kid looks like a spawn of Drew Brees and Tom Brady in a CRISPR experiment gone slightly awry, I see that happening regularly during his pro career. Next year, in contrast, I expect to see Jamarcus Leaf playing long snapper. Moving on to Hamilcar Rashed Jr. Edge, Oregon State. Hamilcar sounds like the nurse started spelling Hamilton on the birth certificate, saw a car just through the window, and kind of mindlessly finished writing the name. Historically speaking, Hamilcar was Carthage's most accomplished general in the First Punic War. His last name, Barca, means lightning or flash, which I'll take as a good omen for the Chargers to draft this Hamilcar to replace Melvin Ingram. There is an amazing trio of linebackers heading into this year's draft, all projected as mid to late round picks, despite having first round names. Starting with Cameron McGrone, linebacker, Michigan. The McGrone is what you hear when you tell the cashier at McDonald's that they got your order wrong. Or in NFL terms, a Cameron McGrone is what Cam Newton makes every time the ground gets in the way of one of his passes. Then we've got Garrett Wallow, linebacker, TCU. Wallow led TCU in tackles his last two seasons and his 90 stops ranked second in the Big 12. Wallow means to indulge in an unrestrained way, and that's exactly the mentality you want from a linebacker at the pro level. And I'm gonna be honest, I may have confused Wallow and Wallup when I put this trio together. But finishing it off is Tough Borland, Ohio State. No, he is not related to Chris Borland, the 49ers linebacker who abruptly retired from the NFL at the age of 24. Tough's father, though, Albert, hosted a local cable television show in Detroit focused on home repair in the 90s. It's hard to be named tough and ever come off the field. You have to play through every injury, stuff the run, and hit dudes hard. When all you wanted in life was to be a dancer. I've got perfect dancing calves. Damn it, why'd you name me tough, daddy? Why did you name me tough? Jamin Davis, linebacker, Kentucky. Not part of the elite linebacking trio, as he might convert to corner to succeed in the NFL. The shame here is that his dad isn't Quentin Jammer. 
If that were the case, we'd be looking at Jammin' Jammer. Bobby Brown the third, defensive interior Texas A&M. Bobby Brown, obviously a very bad fit for Houston. And we've got Chaz Surratt, linebacker, North Carolina. Sounds like a frat guy who has been knighted. I honestly think this is just a fake draft profile, as nothing about this guy makes any damn sense. First of all, two Zs on Chaz. Okay, I can digest that since you did have a teammate named Daz. But here he is wearing both the number 12 and 21. He started at UNC as a quarterback and was converted to... Linebacker? Uh, your passes are a little bit off target, Chaz. We could attempt to fix your footwork. Or you could just play linebacker like all other failed quarterbacks do. And he's from Denver. Denver, North Carolina. Looks like the Russians have moved on from rigging our elections to rigging our drafts. Charles Snowden, Edge, Virginia. Talk about a guy that plays through the whistle. Or maybe a guy who would be better off as an NFL official. A man who is not scared to stand up to the establishment doesn't just play on the edge, he lives on the edge. Players with snow in their last name should legally have to play in Buffalo or Green Bay. Welcome to Green Bay, Mr. Snowden. Please put your cell phone on airplane mode. Down to the nitty gritty, baby, Isaiah Loudermilk. Defensive end, Wisconsin. Defensive is what I get when my milk gets too damn loud. Loudermilk sounds like the dairy industry's answer to hard seltzer. You know, Jim, we could charge a lot more for our milk if it got you drunk. And I know what you're wondering, what kind of drink is a DiCaprio bottle? It's 90 proof louder milk. Duh. DiCaprio appeared uh, on the NFL Draft Diamonds podcast, and because they are fools, they did not title the episode NFL Blood Diamonds. And the best named defensive player in 2021 is Divine Diablo. Diablo is a defensive back out of Virginia Tech named after his great-grandfather, Satan. Sorry, his great-grandfather who was a Native American and his first name is indeed intended to balance out the evil of his last name. Personally, I would consider drafting wide receiver Antonio Nunn if I also drafted Divine Diablo to ensure the balance of good definitely outweighs the balance of bad on my team. But considering the Chiefs and Buccaneers won the last two Super Bowls, maybe that is the wrong approach. Now, I have never received more tips for a player who should be in the best named players episode than Divine Diablo. I think we may have to put him into the best named players hall of fame. And as promised, I've got you a big dick Patreon shout out for all new That's Good Sports patrons. Sean McGivern, Black Nova Scotian Travis Moody, Bush Did 6911, Ray, Go Broncos Dad, Jeremy Russell, of Hadar, the obtuse ruler of Xyphaltron Empire in the Virgo Supercluster, Scott Keen, Monkey Butt 77, Brandon, my last name means bread and water. Panegua. Can I get a trans rights or human rights in the chat? You can. Alex DeLent. Brandon, make it a dark roast and I'll buy your coffee beans perna. Nathan Stegner. Claude Harmon. Tantonus. The best part of waking up. Two girls, one cup. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. Don't forget to check in on Patreon to learn about our monthly Zoom meetings. Thanks for watching. That's good sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube and the offensive players. That episode is on the screen right now. You can click it and watch that. Unless you really hated this episode, then do not watch it because it's the same, but with different guys. <laughs>